that wait upon the Lord. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weak. I will to worship from the Melton Mowbray Methodist Circuit. Sharing the service with me today are Jen and John, who will be reading to us, and Irene and Sharon, who will be leading us in prayer. My thanks to them, and also to Jenny, who makes it all happen, sourcing the music and putting everything together for us. We begin our worship this morning with a lovely hymn praising God's glory and power. Sing for God's glory that colours the dawn of creation, racing across the sky, trailing bright clouds of elation. It's 116 in Singing the Faith, if you want to follow it in your hymn book. But the words of all the hymns will be up on the screen.
And now Irene will lead us in prayer. Prayers of adoration, thanksgiving and confession. Let us pray. Creator God, we come before you in wonder and amazement at the miracle of your handiwork in all that we see that is good and true in the world around us. The heavens and the earth were created by you and we praise you that as we look into dark skies on a clear night, the display before us leaves us breathless and in awe. And we marvel that the moon and sun give light and warmth to all living things. Which reminds us that you are indeed an almighty God. Help us to be good stewards of your creation. We praise you for the new growth that already we see in the earth that has lain dormant for several months and are delighted to see the first flowers, giving us hope of better days to come. We give thanks for all your many blessings upon us, for family and friends who have supported and encouraged us over recent months with phone calls of concern and errands offered. We thank you for the wonderful community spirit which has come to the fore, neighbours helping neighbours, community efforts in feeding and caring for the needy, bringing out the best in human nature. We give thanks for providing us with warm, comfortable homes, enough to eat and drink, loving relationships and so much more. We cannot thank you enough for all who have continued to work during these challenging times when most of us have been at home for our own safety. Our medical and care workers who stoically carry on working for the benefits of others, often putting their own lives at risk. The emergency services, teachers, delivery drivers, shop workers and so many more we give thanks for their dedication and commitment. We look to the scriptures to give us hope and comfort and thank you for the words found there. A few words of hope from Isaiah and Romans. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. And words of comfort, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will not forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Lord, we seek your forgiveness for the times that we are ungrateful for all that you bestow upon us. Occasions when we become discontented with our circumstances, that life at times seems a struggle. We are sorry when we lose sight of you and try to attempt things without seeking your guidance or direction. And when you are not foremost in our thoughts, often leading us to make mistakes and wrong decisions. We seek forgiveness for when we don't behave like followers of you. With hasty words said, deeds left undone, apathy and insincerity. Our sometimes selfish behaviour is so unchristlike that we are shameful and seek your forgiveness. Help us, we pray, to reveal your glory and goodness in our living, that we will bear the imprint of Christ throughout the world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Irene. Today's Bible readings are from the book of Isaiah and the Gospel of Mark. 
which Jen and John will read to us now. Hello. I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 to 31. Comfort for God's people. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground, than he blows on them and they wither, and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens, who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one, and calls forth each one of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Thanks be to God for his word. The Gospel reading this morning is taken from Mark chapter 1 and reading verses 29 to 39. The first section is Jesus heals many. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak, because they knew who he was. Next section is Jesus prays in a solitary place. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he travelled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. This is the word of our Lord. Thank you, Jen and John. Our next hymn is one of my favourites. It invites us to be quiet and reflective as we come before God and acknowledge his presence with us wherever we are. It's hymn number 20 in Singing the Faith. Be still. For the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. Oh, oh, oh. 
Who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. I love this passage from the book of Isaiah and especially the picture of eagles soaring above up into the clouds. I was reminded of these verses last week when out on our daily walk we spotted a buzzard soaring above us in the sky. Not an eagle I know, but still a majestic bird and wonderful to watch. What was the writer of this chapter trying to say when he wrote those words? Who was he referring to? And does this passage, written hundreds of years before the birth of Christ, have anything to say to us today? We don't really know who the writer of Isaiah 40 was only that he was one of the Israelite people in exile in Babylon, some 500 to 600 years BC. Judah had been conquered, and between 597 and 582, many of the nation's leading lights were deported to Babylon, where they remained for some 50 years. The writer of this passage in the book of Isaiah may even have been born there, the son of one of the original deportees. On the surface, life in Babylon may not have seemed too bad. The exiles were not forced to worship foreign gods, but could follow their own traditions. They had their own homes and could grow crops, and in many ways were assimilated into the local community. But they longed to return to their homeland and to be able to worship in the temple in Jerusalem. They became despondent feeling abandoned and forgotten by God. It was a low point in their history. Whoever he was, the writer of Isaiah knew just how the people felt, because he felt it too. But things were about to change. The prophet is given a message of hope and encouragement to proclaim to the people. In the very first verses of chapter 40, we hear these words, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed. The exile's situation in Babylon will not last much longer. Soon they will be able to return to their homeland. I don't know about you, but in some ways, I feel we're a bit like the exiles in Babylon. In a place we'd rather not be. Confined to our homes, separated from friends and family, not able to worship in our churches in familiar ways. Longing to return to life as it was pre-pandemic. We know why we have to do it. But somehow this third lockdown seems much harder than the first two. 
life seems to be on hold and it's difficult to feel motivated. Even with the vaccination programme, there seems to be no clear ending in sight and it's easy to feel weary and bogged down by it all. So can today's passage from Isaiah 40 speak to us in our situation? Can we find there a message of hope and encouragement from God for our day? I think this passage is relevant to us. It certainly speaks to me. How? Well, firstly, it reminds me of God's greatness, that he is our incomparable creator, beyond our understanding and imagining, greater than any human being. So often we limit God to our human understanding, but he is beyond that. The prophet reminds the ex exiled Israelites of this, to whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? Have you ever looked up at the moon and stars and been in awe of the immenseness of space? When I was a little girl, I used to look up at the night sky and wonder where space ended. And what was beyond that? I couldn't imagine it going on forever. And still I can't. It's too big a concept for me to grasp. Or think of the abundant diversity, intricacies and beauty of the natural world. So many species of birds, animals, plants and flowers. So many colours, patterns and shapes. Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. And below, we might add, who created all these? When we think of the immenseness of God's creative power, we cannot help but see our insignificance and the fragility and futility of our grand schemes here on earth. Beside God, even the most powerful earthly rulers are nothing, transient and easily swept away, fleeting moments in God's time. The exiled Israelites are reminded that it is God, creator of the world, who is absolute ruler over nations and powers. That's something we might remember too. Do you not know, the prophet says almost incredulously, have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth and its people are like grasshoppers. What a stark reminder of the immenseness of God and our smallness. And what an encouragement for us. For if God can do all that, then how can we not put our trust in him? So the first thing this passage reminds me of is the greatness of God, our creator. The second thing this passage reminds me of is God's faithfulness and caring steadfast love. God knows and cares for every part of his creation. We're even told he knows each star and calls them by name. This individual relationship of God with his creation is echoed in a later chapter of the book of Isaiah, when God reassures his people that he will not forget them. See, I have written your name on the palms of my hands, he says. When the despondent exiles in Babylon complain that God seems unaware of their plight and is no longer listening to them, the prophet asserts that although the Israelites may feel hopeless and disillusioned, God is faithful 
and cares for them. He will not grow tired and weary as they are and give up on them. I think it's the same for us. Like the stars he calls by name and the exiles in Babylon, God knows and cares for each one of us. Whatever we are going through, however we feel, God does not forget us. He is there with us, giving us strength, hope and encouragement. And that is the third thing this passage reminds me of. God's encouragement and renewing strength and of what is possible if we put our hope in him. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. Soaring on wings like eagles. What a wonderful thought. Can you imagine what it would be like to soar like an eagle? On one of the BBC Spring Watch programmes, not so long ago, they followed a young golden eagle in Scotland, attaching a small camera to it so that they could film its flight. It was amazing. You could see the world spread out below, almost as the eagle saw it, though they have better eyesight than we do. You could see the feathers on its head ruffling slightly as it glided on the air currents. You could feel a sense of freedom as it soared above the mountains, a strong, powerful, majestic, beautiful creature. What would it mean for us to soar like eagles? I think it would mean freedom, rising above the things that bind us, whether that's lockdown or our own personal situations. I think it would mean seeing the bigger picture rather than our current confined circumstances. I think it would mean receiving renewed strength and vision and hope. That's what God promises us if we put our trust in him. What wonderful encouragement and what possibilities God's promises offer. If we really put our trust and hope in God, our lives will be different. But it may take time to see things change. The exiles in Babylon were impatient for God to act, but they had to wait for God's timing. Patience is needed by us too. When we're going through difficult situations, when we can't see the way forward, it's easy to want quick re resolutions. With the current pandemic, we long for things to go back to normal, but we may have to wait. There are encouraging signs with the rollout of vaccines, but we've been warned there is still some way to go yet before restrictions can be lifted. And another warning. Yes, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, we are on the brink of a change in our current circumstances. Yes, we can look forward in hope to return into a less restricted life. But things won't be the same as they were before Covid. The exiled Israelites did eventually return to Jerusalem, something they had looked forward to for over 50 years. But things weren't the same. They returned not to the Jerusalem they had left, but to a ruined city. Its inhabitants a mixture of nationalities brought in over the years to replace those deported. They returned not as they had dreamed of to be able to worship again in the, in the temple, but to find it destroyed. And so there was much rebuilding and readjustment to be made. Whatever their expectations, the reality was very different. So too for the people of Jesus' time, who longed for God's Messiah to come, and, they hoped, set them free from Roman occupation. But for them too, the reality was very different. Jesus came 
not as a warrior conquering king, but bringing freedom in a different way, showing people God's healing, caring, forgiving love in human form. And the reality for us too, as we emerge from the COVID pandemic, may be very different to our expectations. We may have to think of doing things new ways, of different forms of worship, of new ways of serving God and being church. But whatever the reality is, in our personal lives, our church life, or collectively as a nation, we can be sure that God will be with us, encouraging us, giving us strength, offering us hope if we put our trust in him. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn 641 in Singing the Faith. You may not recognise the words, but the tune may be familiar. When circumstances make my life too hard to understand, no doubt or fear, no pain or strife can snatch me from God's hand. I think the last verse is particularly relevant for us today. It is enough for me to know God's promise and God's care. Wherever on life's path I go, my Saviour will be there. We'll sing it now. When so Make my life to hold to understand. No doubt or fear, no pain or strife can snatch me from God's hand. In valleys where the path is steep, with shadows. in our prayers of concern. And now we come to our prayers of concern for others. So let us pray. Ever-living God, our Creator and Redeemer, you love us and know us better than we know ourselves. With a word, you created all things, and so we pray that you will hear the words of your children as we pray, giving thanks to you for your church, the world and all its people. Heavenly Father, we pray for the worldwide Christian church in all its wonderful diversity. We pray especially for those churches 
who meet together in difficult and dangerous circumstances. And at this time of the pandemic, for all those churches who cannot meet in person, but only online, may we all feel your abiding presence to uphold our courage and strengthen our faith. We pray for all of our churches here in Melton Mowbray and for all of our church leaders. May we see unity and common goals that reach the people of our town, showing to all who we meet the strength and power of your love. Creator God, we pray for your world and its people with all their needs questions and longings. So often we struggle to understand the reasons behind things like coronavirus and yet we know that in the midst of such events your love is shown in the acts of bravery, selflessness selflessness, and compassion which follow. We pray for all who suffer in such dreadful circumstances and for those who are tasked with providing medical and community support, and eventually for the long task of recovery that will surely follow this devastating pandemic. We think of the emptiness of our usually busy buildings, particularly schools, colleges and universities. There are so many children whose basic needs are not being met. Some are hungry for love, hungry for time and care, hungry for their friends, or just plain hungry. We remember the empty shops, cafes and restaurants that normally employ so many people. And we pray for the many thousands of people who are worried about their businesses not being able to withstand this latest lockdown. God of love, you heal the broken-hearted and you gather in all who are lost. We give thanks today for the life of Captain Sir Tom Moore and we pray for his family and for all who are mourning the loss of family members or friends. We offer to all we offer to you all who are suffering in mind or body, asking for peace and for your healing presence in their need. Send your blessing on all who are afraid or alone, on those whose lives are being destroyed by abuse or violence, and on all for whom home is not a safe place. And in a moment of quiet, we share before God the people and the situations that lay heavily on our own hearts. God of love, Your kindness is everlasting. Surround us with your arms of love. Keep our eyes fixed on you and make us ready to follow where you lead, trusting that you will provide for us today and always. Amen. And together we join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Ever and ever. Amen. 
And the final hymn for this morning is number 455. All my hope on God is founded, he doth still my trust renew. founded he doth still my trust renew me through change and chance he guideth only good and only true God unknown he alone calls my heart to be his own human pride earthly glory sword and crown betray our trust what with care and toil we fashion tower and temple fall to dust but God's power by our is my temple and God's great goodness endureth Deep his wisdom passing thought Splendor, light and life attend him Beauty springeth out of naught Evermore from his store Newborn world rise and Daily doth the Almighty Giver Bounteous gifts on us bestow His desire our soul delighteth Pleasure leads us where we go Love doth stand at His hand Joy doth wait on His command Still from earth to God eternal Sacrifice of praise be done High above all praises praising For the gift of Christ his Son Christ doth call one and all Ye who follow shall not fall Many thanks again to Irene, Jen, John and Sharon for their contributions to our worship today. And as always, to Jenny for the wonderful way she puts everything together. Next week, Leslie Sargent will be leading our worship. As a blessing, I'd like to read Benediction by Robert Davidson. May all your hopes be sustained between the wings of seagulls and may your fears, before they start, be taloned fast by eagles. May curling salmon leap the falls on the river of your strife and pine trees crack with age in the forests of your life. May speckled fawns raise their heads beneath your vaulted blue and may the God of frost and stars be evermore with you. Amen. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. 